Okay, and we're back for part two. Ooh, which I'll just be continuing on stuff. So, just finish up the Paper Mario rant. What? Uh, so, what else can I talk about? I liked Mega Man Legends 1. I, I, I played the N64 version. I actually liked Mega Man Legends. I thought it was actually a pretty good game. Again, kind of taking the series in a very different direction. You know, I, I agree. I I have a... um. Oh, you know what it was? It was the bonus content on the Mega Man Anniversary Mega Collection, the, the interview about the origins of Mega Man, and it said that Mega Man Legends brought Mega Man kicking and screaming into 3D gaming. It wasn't perfect, but for what it was, it actually wasn't bad. I do like the fact that it was a very different story and a very different take on the Mega Man character. Never played the sequel, always wanted to. God, I would kill to have a copy of that se that sequel because I always wanted to play it. I wanted to see where they took this, where they took the idea, and I I'm sad that it just did not get made. I, I know it got made, but I was sad that it just never that we never got a massive release of it. Probably probably look it up here after I finish up this recording just to see what's going on with that. Oh. <sighs> Up some alarm traps. Traps aren't really going to do me much good in this game, in this level. I will set up a couple traps, but for the most part, I'm interested in doors, just to increase, the, go to max efficiency in my rooms. Oh, well, that's just still training and researching. Ugh. Wow, am I tired? Ugh. Gotta stay awake, gotta stay awake, gotta, gotta focus on commentary. I did go shopping after... Uh, so I spent time with my sister today playing Mario Party 8, and then afterwards I left, I'm like, no, I have some other things to do that I've written down. One of them was going shopping. I wanted to take care of a store credit that I had before it expired it at it. Rite Aid. So I went to Rite Aid, and I had some... I had the flyer, and I was just going through some stuff. And I know this will be more for my Coupon Charles channel, but I'll just mention it here because I was so proud of myself. I bought four... I bought four rolls of toilet paper, a six-pack of disposable razor blades... One pro guide, pro, pro glide razor blade, and two tubes of toothpaste. Uh, altogether, that stuff was about forty dollars. I paid. Do I remember two dollars and sixty-eight cents was my final out-of-pocket cost. I actually got the retail cost down to twenty-two cents. I was pretty pleased with myself, and I told my mom about that when I got home. And she's like. Well, yeah, you do that, but you don't actually buy, like, real grocery things, you know. And, like, so wait, you don't use paper towels, you don't use toothpaste, and you don't use razor blades? <laughs> she can't really refute that point. I do get she, what she means. I didn't really actually buy anything edible, but I use coupons on edible things, too. I, I got coupons, you know. I, I got a whole box worth. I can do this. <laughs> I will have to, I'll have to help the non-believers. <laughs> You know, it can't, it can't be perfect. You know, it, it's not. I, I do believe most of the couponing things you see are pretty much fallacies. I mean, you have to... I, I coupon pretty aggressively, but if you really... It really is impossible to coupon perfectly every single time. It really is impossible. It, it just doesn't happen. There's just... you the, Just the coupons do not exist every moment. If maybe you're really super aggressive, maybe you can massive it, but, you know, I, yo, there's not enough hours in the day for me. You know, my couponing time, I spend... I must spend about five hours a week couponing. That's about all the time I spend. And I'm knocking $40 grocery bills down to two sixty-eight. I think I'm doing pretty well. Which, by the way, that two sixty-eight, because of that Pro, Gl Pro Glide Razor I mentioned, I actually got a $4 credit again with the store. So I actually made a dollar thirty-two shopping today. <laughs> I'm simple, but I know what I'm doing. That'll help. Which, by the way, I'm kind of getting a scruff here. I do need to shave actually pretty soon. And I got one. I got a razor with a battery. It's like a hand razor with a battery. I guess it must vibrate somehow. So that's gonna be kind of interesting when I finally do open that up. Which, by the way, shh, don't tell anybody. But I have this really cool idea. My friend is actually my one of my my best college friend in the world. He's moving into well, well, my college roommate. He's moving into an apartment for I guess the first time in his life. He's lived with his mom most of his life, and he's about a couple years younger than me. 
and he's moving in there, and I just thought this cool idea of a care package. I'm gonna put, like, a bunch of my coupon stuff together that I got for, like, nothing, and I'm gonna send it to him. I think that would be just a really cool, you know, welcome to your new apartment gift. I think he'll like that a lot. Because, you know, because he's like, oh, I'm gonna have to get used to paying bills in an apartment and stuff, and maybe I can just kind of help him have kind of a survival kit to just start on just as he kind of eases himself into everything. I have to... God, that first... Oh, this this would be a good story. My first my first apartment, I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit because there was an apartment I stayed in for like three months. It was a woman's basement. I'm not going to count that apartment. I'm going to count my actual first apartment after I left college, which I was so frightened, but I found my roommate, Josh. He was going to stay with me. It was... It was a pretty nice location. It was the college town where I went to college. It was right down the street. And because I was waiting to hear back from teach from jobs in the teaching sectors that I'd applied to, I never got any of them. I actually just ended up working for the college kitchen, which actually paid pretty well. I ended up making like nine seventy five an hour by the time I left there. I was I was actually making really good money. I got an apartment that was five hundred dollars a month, two people. I had to pay ev I had to pay everything except water. And it was essentially a long like you went in. There was a long hallway for the lobby, right. In front of the entrance door was one of the one of the room, the bedrooms. To the left was a very large bedroom that I claimed via squatters' rights. I moved in first. To the right of that hallway was the living room, the main living area, the bathroom there, and then the living area. And then there was the kitchen at the very far end at the back of the at the apartment of the apartment building. It was a building that had four apartments, an old house that had been split up. And so I claimed squatters' rights. I had moved all of my stuff, in my bed into the big room. I had everything scattered around. I remember it so clearly. I actually stayed with my, actually I'd stayed with my friend Eva for a little while. Just a couple days until my lease actually started. I'd actually been storing some stuff in the upper hallway until I could begin living there. Which the landlord said that was okay. I remember that first night I moved in. I'm just moving stuff around trying to get things in their place because me and Josh had shopped together to get this and this and that and said, okay, we'll need this, we'll need this, we'll need this. Because he had bought, like, a futon and stuff, and I got a rug. So I thought it would be... It was an old... It had all wood... It was wood flooring and stuff, and, like, the paint was peeling on the walls. I got this carpet that was a really nice carpet that was, like, yellow... It was, like, yellow, brown, and, and um, blue. But it, it anchored the room really nicely because of the color scheme of the walls. So I didn't even have to repaint. Um, but that first night, I had, like, some lights turned on. I just got this really cheap, like, $10 lamp just to light the room. Please. I just remember being really anxious and scared. I, I remember that so clearly. I was just organizing stuff in the main room. I had my couch there because it had been moved in thanks to my sister and my mom. Just my little couch and my big couch. And I'm sitting there just sorting through boxes. I had a DVD player going. We hadn't we hadn't hooked up our, DVD, our DirecTV or anything yet. And I had the DVD player going with my my God old old my big old silver TV. It was the, that's it. I was the last television I ever actually physically owned. It was this big like uh, 32 inch TV, you know, big tube TV, heavy as hell. But I had that sitting on some crates, and I was just playing Sailor Moon DVDs. I had the American version of Sailor Moon, which you know, for what for what it was, it was actually wasn't that bad. But you know, just for something familiar, like okay, you know, this is happening. I can do this. Because that, that first night being by yourself, it is liberating. It is also very... You have so much anticipation. Like, can you make this work? Like, is this going to work? Because I was so worried about money and, like, was I going to be able to manage this? Because, <laughs> realistically, I could not afford that apartment. To be perfectly realistic, at that time, and even now... Because you know, I have my college loans. I really could not afford that. I actually had gotten under... Okay, see, I, I don't understand this. Okay, I made nine. Well, I got up to nine seventy-five, and then I never told them. But I was starting at eight. Did I start me at seven fifty? Eight. She started me at eight. I qualified as uh, under financial hardship deferment, which I went under for years. I must have been under hardship deferment for like two years of my loans. You only have three years max, and so I didn't have to pay my college loans except for my Advantage loans, which are private loans to my loan company, so I only had to buy, um, is this where I decided to break through? I'm thinking about it. Oh, no, I'm still thinking about breaking through. I'm seeing, you can see that the green guys actually made movement. 
You know, I'll continue the story, because this is actually a good story. I'm go about, I think I'm about to break through this wall and say, you know, screw it, let's fight. <laughs> yep, I'm going to fight. And we'll see where the green guy has developed. But, yeah, that first night, I'm like, yeah, my loans. I still had to pay the loans that were privately given to me from my loan lender, which is VSAC in Vermont, the Vermont Student Assistance Corporation. Which was uh, $60 a month at that point? Yeah, 60 The door has been manufactured. So I had that. I had my 250 rent payment because it was half of my roommates, and then I had half of the bills it generated. And me and, jo me and Josh were pretty comfortable. He was me I actually felt really bad for Josh, and Josh knows I love him. We are actually still really good friends. I got the big room, okay? And he, didn't, he wasn't really that really wasn't a big deal. He was mad that the room I gave him had, like, one plug, and we kept on blowing the breaker because of all the things that he had in his room that were pretty much basically the same as I had. It's just he had two more of them. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it took me like a couple days to finally get everything set up, and this was in the middle of me still working, so like, you know, you got your room, your your place half set up, and you're like, oh, I gotta go to work, but I wanna make sure this is done when I get home so I can just relax, because we had, like, my TV set up, and he hooked up his, um, his PS2 to that, and I had my GameCube hooked up, so we had GameCube, and, and that, we didn't, we must not have had DirecTV for a couple weeks, and then finally we did get rid of the watch TV, we ended up getting, he ended up getting a TV, and I ended up getting a TV so we could just do things privately in our own rooms. Uh, that's a really good thing. I would really, when you're living with your roommates, I would actually highly recommend, even if you're like really good friends, have your own personal space. Seriously, have your own personal space. You will appreciate it so much. It's not out of any kind of rudeness, but I think just you know, your friends because you appreciate the time you have together, but you certainly don't want to be spending every waking moment together. I, you don't. I, I, you just don't, and you want to just chillax sometimes. It, it's not out of any kind of cruelty to your friends. It's just we kind of realized we were just simply in each other's face too much, and we just wanted to be alone. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with that. You just realize it at a certain point. That place, that place was pretty nice, though. The, the only major complaint I had was that it, being a very old building in the winter, that, that place was cold as hell. We did have a central heating system, but that didn't reach to my room. <laughs> so my room was very cold. In the summer, it rocked. Because that place held no heat at all. It could be like 95 degrees outside, and our apartment was like 60. It was so cool. You didn't need I, a fan. At most, I needed a fan in my window. That was it. It was great. Um, I lived right across... I Right next to me was the post office. Right across the street was a little convenience store. If I had to grab anything, there was a supermarket in walking distance. It's like uh, White's Market, which is a little local supermarket. That was really great. The laundry right down the street. We didn't have laundry facilities at the place, but laundry was always a great thing. I like laundromats because you can go there... It just kind of lets you just kind of get away from things for a while. I like to sit down on one of the tables and just write. That's actually how I finished up the Twin Buttons. That's how I finished up my first novel, was actually just taking my laundry and writing. And I finally finished it. It was actually there that I had the idea of publishing it. When I, during the time I was in the apartment, and that's, I remember I was in the apartment, I was in that apartment when it got published and I got sent the very first copy, and I was, I was, I was, I was so happy to have that. I had the local stores carry it, and that was the coolest thing ever. I, I was on top of the world living there. I, that was a really great place to live. The only thing that really was just lingering in my head is that I knew I had to pay my loans back at some point. <laughs> Looking back on it, I mean, you know, I, you know, you're waiting for the bubble to burst, but you just don't really acknowledge it. That's just kind of the sucky part of it. Because now I'm, I'm living... No, I'm, I'm happy enough that I have the money to actually cover my... take care of my loans at this point. Hey, see, we got the blue dungeon here. I will have to use the... Dis Do I use it? No, 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 I don't have to use destroy walls here. Sorry I'm not commenting, but you see I've conquered the, the green guy. Uh, as uh, you might have noticed during the video, these videos, he, his forces have been slowly dwindling. I don't know if he just stopped getting gold, so they're just getting pissed off and leaving. But he was losing his uh, members slowly but surely. And now we've got him. He's done. The green guy is at least with stuff to do with the blue guy. And his meager forces are trying to stop me, but it's no good. We're just too powerful. <laughs> We're just too powerful. So, green guy's gone. So, yeah, that, that apartment that apartment was you awesome. Oh, I'll say the fact that well, it's a college town. We were living over a college kids who had these terrible parties at like 2 o'clock in the morning, these drunken parties. And it was awful. I'm, you know, I'm a couple, I was a couple years older. So, like, I didn't want that, and I was never part of that scene in college. You have claimed an enemy room. So, 
you just didn't, an enemy you, you just didn't do that kind of stuff. It was actually kind of funny. It was a couple months into no, June. Under no, it must have been January, June, July. It was. It was six months into that lease that I was kind of like, you know what? As much as I like this apartment, because I, you know, I took my. It was my very first year, not in school. It is paid after leaving high school, and that's that's a very weird feeling. I I, I have to admit that is such a strange feeling when September comes around and you aren't in school anymore. It is it's such a bizarre feeling to think that like that thing that you've done since you were in, you were five isn't going to happen anymore. And I did that for a year, and it was I think it was, I I remember it clearly. It was in November. I think I said, you know what? It was kind of my own arrogance that I didn't have a teaching license at that point. And I I just told myself, you know what? As much as it bugged me the requirements of getting a teaching license, they're just requirements. I don't have to care about them after that point. And so I got a hold of the financial aid office, and I said, I would like to reapply to be re-enroll in school, because then I could actually defer all of my loans to education deferment at that point. The hardship deferment would only work, work on my federal loans, but education deferment would defer all of them, because they were all an education type of loan. And so they signed me up. I did the free application for federal student assistance. At that point, I was considered... Because I, I had my bachelor's at that point, but I was also considered an independent student. I was not considered a dependent of any person, so my financial status totally changed. I got pretty much all the money I needed, and I took out like a $2,000, another $2,000 advantage loan to cover my remaining costs, because I just needed a year and a half. That's all I needed. I finished up all the education courses. I did this while working full-time for Aramark and part-time as a student. I, it was quite a grueling schedule. I thought I actually handled it pretty well. Uh, and I can do nothing but thank Aramark for being so accommodating to what I was doing. You know, I just... Thankfully, your schedule is pretty consistent. You know, you know when you're going to be having classes every week, so this is when I can work. I pretty much work all weekends, and there's days during the week. So I, I'm amazed I actually pulled it off. You know, I had papers and everything that I did, and I cannot believe I managed it, but I did it. And then I took out loans in my final... See, this guy just has the fine. I took out loans in my final year to cover all of my costs of living, because I stopped working when I was student teaching, which you have to do. You can't. My mother was telling me, like, oh, you could still work nights while you student teach. Oh, no, you can't. You are a full-time teacher for 75 school days. You cannot be having a full-time job at the same time. It doesn't work. You're already working full-time. And then, this this was the crazy thing about that apartment. I still kept my apartment. I was getting really desperate for a teaching job, and I was just about... I had actually gotten another job at a convenience store, because I didn't think I could get my Airmark job back. Which I probably could have, because I actually left on good terms. I probably could have, but, you know, it's going to be different people, so you wonder if it's going to... You know, you're going to be working with different people, you don't know if the dynamic has changed. But then, out of the blue, one of my last jobs I applied for was a long-term sub-position down at Hartford High School in White River Junction. It's like, oh, you know, whatever. And they called me. I, it was the day after the one day I had worked for uh, the Gogo Mart in St. Johnsbury. And they called me, and it's like, it, it must have been like two weeks before the school year started, and they're like, can you see us Monday? Um, sure. And they called me down, I had an interview, and they were incredibly impressed with me, and they're like, and they said, we'd like to offer you the job. And they, basically it was going to be a January to April thing. They offered me the job, and I accepted. Great little school, by the way. I, I have nothing but praise for the Hartford High School down the down the Vermont. Very nice little school. And it actually made me sad when I looked at the, I looked at the time now. But all of my all of the students I was, I taught in high school, and it's 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 kind of sad. <laughs> it's it's the reality of teaching, you know. I I will always think of my students as little, as the, you know little rascals that they were that you know, they grow up. And. It was funny, I was, you know, this was, this was cool, I, I can't believe I did it, but it's what I had to do. I was commuting from Lindenville to White River Junction every single day, which was an hour and 15 minute commute to school, an hour and, and an hour and 15 minutes back. It was a hell of a commute, and I've done that in a full blizzard, I did that once. I went down the interstate at like 30 miles per hour, but I got to work some of those days. Some days I did call out, because one, I remember one day I did actually fall on the ice, you know, getting out of you know, work, and I just got really scared. I'm like, okay, I'm not going, because I'd hurt myself. And, yeah, you have sub plans and stuff. 
Those are great kids. And actually, when my contract expired, I was like the last day of my expired con my contract. They're calling me and like, we don't think the guy is gonna be able to come back. You have claimed an enemy. We want you to go for two more days. We don't think he's gonna come back. But then hang with us because we might need you again. And I did, you know, I finally ended the job, and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen at that point, but they told me. And then I think, like, the next day, they're like, he's not going to be able to do this. Come back Monday, you'll finish up the rest of the year. And my kids freaking cheered when they saw me. They were so happy to have me back, and it was so... I, I was literally moved to tears at the end of the day. I'm like, I didn't... You never think that they think about you that much, but... To not have me and have to deal with another for like just a couple days, they loved me so much. They missed me so much. They they got because they gotten used to what I did. They liked how I did things. Oh, it was so horrifying. And actually, after that, when I got the rich for a job, which was one of the most terrible jobs I've ever had, and and unfortunately, the reason I, the reason I left teaching because I realized what a, a terrible bureaucracy it could be. I was I was kind of shielded being a long term sub because they didn't really try to integrate me that much into everything. And also, the dynamic of the school is totally different. It's departments and stuff. But it, it's when I got the Richford job that I got the apartment in Orleans and I left the apartment in Linville. And I that that was a really special little place and it was it was my home. It was, it was sad enough to leave after that many years. And I I remember having a little bit of sickness, sadness leaving. Like, and you just, you just kind of look back, and you just, it, you take the breath. I'm even tearing up right now, thinking about it. But you, you, you take that breath. You take one last look at all the empty rooms, and I'm actually, I'm actually getting teary right now. I'm actually course. getting teary right now. You take that one last look at all the rooms, and it's empty, and you walk out, and you lock the door. And it, it was sad. It was really, really sad. Because I'd lived there, I think it was there for three years. That, that's how long I had lived in that apartment. It was my home. <laughs> you know, memories and stuff. Okay, now this area we've gone to here. I could have dug out all that gold previously. Getting back to the game. <laughs> oh, behind this last door is our final opponent. We got some archers here. We just or are they thieves? Are they thieves, or archers, thieves, thieves. Beat up the thieves here. But now we are going to have the problem of this final door. That my imps are going to head towards very quickly. An enemy has been converted to your cause. So they grab the thieves and take them back to the prisons. We'll get to this final door, and only my strongest and beefiest monster should break this door down. Because there is a final battle behind this door. A couple final battles, actually. And while these uh, wizards you're going to see me fight are actually very, very strong, they are probably... We're going to beat them in a battle of sheer numbers. There's just simply too many of us trained to have opponents for them to fight. Did, oh, well, I never got an orc. I thought I would... I thought I got an orc. So here's the wizards. They're going to start zapping off. This room looks really weird. It's actually a combination of several temples and... Uh, uh, scavenger rooms. So, this room's kind of interesting. Zap him, zap him, zap him! And we're just chucking fireballs. And what really sucks is that they start healing themselves, which is really, really annoying. So you gotta make sure you have enough forces that you can kind of de make sure they deplete their magic and they just cannot keep up with the onslaught. So once you keep kind of knocking one of them out, you know you've got this one. Because the, the one was once you start knocking the wizard's numbers down, you're just gonna simply be overpowering them. So we're just chucking fireballs as hard as we can. This one guy trying to knock him out. I remember I'm cheering at the screen. Come on, come on, come on! Beat him, beat him, beat him! Do not open that last door until you're ready. Now my imps are gonna come in again. They'll start claiming these very. There's a bunch of little small rooms here. They're gonna start claiming. And actually, the very final battle of this. There's also a hero portal here where the final heroes will come once I've killed all of the leftover wizards. Because the wizards are who have to die. Either that or all the other all the other heroes have to die. I don't believe there's any other secrets in this level. I think we've pretty much covered them all. You have taken control of a new room. And once I claim all these little rooms, I will just be selling them off just to make them more plain to see. 
You have taken control of a new room. Yep. You have claimed an enemy room. There's the one tile room there. <laughs> Take care of all those icons. <laughs> You've claimed an enemy room. Like, no, 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 no. Sell these off. Just make this room a little easier to see. There we go. Okay. A vampire has risen so long, my name's actually gonna seal this room. They're so quick and fast now. So heading back to the. Oh yeah, I had a thought of making this train that a training room just so the monsters would go yeah. there. But now we gotta yeah. grab yeah. the wizards oh. and we need to torture them to death. Because that's how we're gonna finish this level up. And I think I, I eventually get the idea of oh just throw lightning bolts on them and kill them. Who cares? Just get this level over with, because I've been, you know, I've been at it for an hour at this point. It's like, can we just end the level? So I just slap and kill all these thieves, so their bodies are taken to the graveyard to make vampires. Let's kill them off. Like, let's just get on with this. Who cares? Because like, you know, can dig all all that gold and put it in your treasure in spite of more than a hundred thousand gold pieces. We've we've done it. We've proven we've won the day. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just kill them already. But I'm, I'm happy with the commentary on this episode, though, that I'm able to, to tell some good stories. I've, I've, that's a first. The first story I've ever told I've actually, I've actually teared up. Because I, I remember that was actually a really sad moment, leaving that apartment. And people, people were... I remember, I remember my friend saying that. It's like, dude, that's like your home. It's like, you know, like, I think most of my friends had visited me in that, house, in that apartment. Like, it was, it was my home. I had made it my home for so long. Hey, do I get the idea here to just say, you know, screw it, just kill them, who cares? Oh yeah, I was training up the... I wanted the warlocks to keep training. Get stronger. Come on, just kill the bad guys already. What are you waiting for? We've got vampires now. A torture victim They're just gonna go... They'll just by independently go to the scavenger room to start to increase the scavenging rate. I'm not actually gonna... Oh, see, wizards are already started dying, so I'm just gonna send lightning bolt down to kill these ones. One more should do it. And boom. We now have the final enemy, the Lord of the Land. So we're basically going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to drop the Warlocks on him. And screw the imprisonment and just kill him. There's more of them us. Let's just kill him. Enough of this. Just throw the Warlocks down and start attacking. Even my even my little monsters are going to start to Just kill them. Kill the good, good guys. Just kill them. Die, 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 die! I'm worried at, I'm worried at this point also with the long recording. I'm like, don't crash, don't crash at this point. I've almost done it. Wait, my viewers need to see this. So now all of us are attacking all of them. At this point, any of us attack is firing. Like, look how they're hopping. They can't do anything in this tier mod. Get him! Death to the good guy! He's a beast. You gotta kill him, I'm right. Yes! Okay. We did it. Whew! The message should be popping up pretty quick here. And they're grabbing the bodies. <laughs> oh, let's make it a treasure room. Success, the land is yours. Let's make a treasure room for all the treasure we got. So that's that. Herilyn's down. The people enjoyed each other's company so much that they'll be together forever now. We've thrown them all into a big pit and piled tons of rocks onto them. A fitting end, we trust you agree. Not sure what was up with the volume there at the end, but this has been Let's Play Dungeon Keeper. This is Firewizard23. Take care and bye-bye for now. Everybody, bye-bye.